Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and today I thought I would answer a few more of your questions. So I am going to go to Instagram this time to pull a few to answer. If you have questions for me, leave them down below. So this first question comes from Perspective and Wisdom. What does it mean when sometimes you can feel the angels very strongly and other times when you asked for them, you can't really feel their presence? A lot of times that has to do with the individual. If your frequency is in a place where you can't perceive your angels because you're stressed, you're grieving, um, you're trying to be too controlling of your situation, if you're not open to hearing them, they can't get in and they won't interfere with your free will. So actually in times like that, if you're really open and receptive, you might easily perceive them. If you don't, a lot of times they're trying to leave really big signs and signals in front of you. So if you are asking your angels for help and you feel like they're not helping you, that's a cue to you to make sure that you are getting into a calm, peaceful state. Usually doing a clearing meditation or some sort of clearing activity would be very, very beneficial. And you know, manage the expectations as well. Because there are times, angels are always helping you and they're always communicating with you. But there are times where if you're not ready for a certain answer, like let's say you want to know like what's going to happen with my career, what's going to happen with my, I don't know, all those questions. And they may not give you an answer about that, but rather they'll give you an answer about um, taking a vacation. And you might wonder like, what the heck, what does that mean? Or you just feel, maybe you don't even get that message. Maybe you just feel like, you know what, I'm giving up forget this, I'm just gonna take time off and go on a vacation because I'm fed up, <laughs> all right? And then while you're on vacation, maybe you get some spark of inspiration or you meet somebody who says, hey, we have a job over here. They have a way of working with humans and our psychology and the way that we perceive things. <laughs> so they will get the message across to you one way or another. And they're talking right now about inspired action. That's a big way that they communicate with humans is by inspiring you to action. They're not controlling you. They're just giving you a little bit of a hint, like here you go. So if you feel like you're in a space and you're like, these angels are not talking to me. They're not around. They're always around. Get, get your energy clear, try to raise your frequency, and then you'll be able to sense them, feel them but know that they are working with you whether you sense them or not, <laughs> okay? So let's get another question here. This one comes from Marilyn 13 Angels. Death and dying, what happens when you're close to dying in transition after death? Does Archangel Osriel come through or is he around most of the time close to dying in after death? Thank you, beautiful queen, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you and I appreciate you as well. Um, I don't have the answer for that. I don't really know. What I do know and what I'm feeling right now is that you're never alone and that it's not nearly as scary as some people might think it would be. Um, if you're close to dying, you definitely have the, you start to perceive your angels a little more clearly, at least that's what I'm feeling right now. So you start to feel like these beings are around you. A lot of times people, when they're not familiar with their angels, and they start to have visions, okay? Or they have visions of people who are also on the other side. They're, they're telling me that the visions are really a party for some people. It depends on who you are. If you don't want a huge like party on the other side, <laughs> when you're kind of crossing over, then they won't come. But um, definitely you always have at least one angel there with you. There's some being that has to help um, ease your pain. And they're saying that that's what um, sort of the unconscious state is, is it's already starting to lift you out. Um, and they're even letting me know about people who go into comas, for example. They're, they're in between worlds, so they're, um, they'll still hear you and still perceive that you're there, but it's like you're down a long haul, like you're you know, kind of echoey or, or what have you. And then they have some, in some cases, not everyone's the same, but in some cases they have some um, experience with the other side as well. So they're definitely in between. But I think it's very individual. You're never alone they make sure they're showing me that they make sure that um a lot of people get plucked out sort of like they don't yank you out of your body <laughs> but they make sure that you're lifted away from that consciousness before too much suffering would occur if someone does suffer it's often it's not their fault but it's you know they might be resisting or hanging on to life okay so uh I, again, that could be a pretty big conversation. I don't have a whole and complete answer for you because I'm just human, but um, I hope that helps out a little bit. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so this comes from Edith. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Edith uh, Schoginger. 
sorry, I'm not saying that right. I'm sorry. Um, how to stay grounded and help, excuse me, develop a sense of human self as a spiritual being. So this is incredibly important to always be balanced. How often do we come across people who are just off in la la land and they, you know, oh, but the spirit is talking to me. Yeah, but what are you doing now as a human? You're completely disconnected, right? So it's staying grounded. That's actually, it's a pretty easy thing. Well, okay, someone probably laughed at that, me saying it's an easy thing. <laughs> but um, you can get out into nature. That's very, very grounding. Getting around animals is also incredibly grounding. Fresh air. You can meditate. You can meditate with Archangel Sandalfin. Sandalfin is really, really good at helping you balance being human with uh, being a spiritual being in a human body, right? So your spiritual self and your physical self. If those two things are not online on with one another, then you're not having a human existence, <laughs> right? And a lot of times people kind of mess that up. They forget you're not just supposed to escape being human. You're supposed to be present in your body and you are supposed to be functioning as a human. So if you have difficult times, you have negative thoughts, just some awareness around that can be the turning point. And if you don't, if, like, let's say you get some awareness on it, around it and you're like, you know what? I'm still in a bad mood. <laughs> like, I don't feel like coming out of it right now. That's okay. You don't have to. All right. I know everybody's like, oh, be positive, be positive. But if you need to process something, yeah, being positive is incredibly important, but don't sidestep. Yes. Face what you have to face, process it and let yourself come on through it. So staying grounded and making that a practice. Of course, there are crystals that are incredibly grounding, any kind of like onyx or um, uh, uh, tourmaline. I don't know why I blanked on that. Black tourmaline is very, very grounding. Um, hematite can be very, very grounding, any of those kinds of crystals. But it's not enough to just take a crystal and go, okay, I did it, I'm grounded now, right? You have to give some intention around it and some consciousness and, and let that affect your energy to keep you very, very grounded and cleared, right? It's very, very detoxifying as well. Okay, so this will probably be the final question here. It comes from Jen Doyle, 15. Would love a talk on opening the third eye and crown chakra mode effectively. Also, I recently heard you need to ask angels to be with you and help every day or they give up. Is that true? <laughs> No, that's absolutely not true. And I already wrote the response, but I want to share that here. The angels do not give up on you. They, their whole mission is to guide you. So they live, you know, in their realm, but um, they're, they're always there with you. No, they will never give up on you. As a matter of fact, as a child, um, I had this ability to talk to angels. Of course, everyone thought I was a big weirdo. <laughs> I was in a very uh, tumultuous situation. And I remember, I remember being able to hear the angels coming in and I was so angry at them because I was in so much pain and I told them to go away, get away from me. We're here to help. We love you. You don't love me. You're not here. You didn't help me. You didn't save me. And now look at what's happening. Look at how everybody sees me. I'm shamed and, and, you know, kind of vilified all the time. You know, I obviously didn't have those words as a kid, but, <laughs> but you know, they're mean to me now. And I knew, like, everybody sees me a certain way now, and that's not true. It's not who I am. And I also had an awareness that what was happening was one of the worst things that could happen to a child. And needless to say, I was extremely angry and in pain. And so I commanded them to go, but they didn't. <laughs> they just silenced and it took a very, very long time. Every once in a while, I'd kind of dip in and get some guidance or whatever. But um, it wasn't until I became an adult that I was like, okay, you know what? I'm ready for this again. So even in a scenario like that, they didn't go away. They just silenced and they wouldn't interfere with my free will. So they never give up on you. They're always trying to help you and get you moving along. Now, to answer the question about opening your third eye and your crown chakra, um, this can happen in stages, of course. Um, you don't have to worry about everything popping open all at once. As a matter of fact, you want to be very, very careful with the third eye. The third eye can pop open in, as I said, in stages, and you might see a flash, you might jolt. Uh, it can actually be kind of, um, it can kind of be a thing. Uh, one, of, one of the times that my third eye open for the first time, I had actually a vision of uh, Ganesh. And I was actually in this spiritual place and we were doing, uh, it's kind of, it wasn't really a Reiki thing, but it was something along those lines. And uh, my third eye popped open, I saw a flash and I jolted 
right as she was uh, massaging my shoulders, I jolted right up into the masseuse's belly, <laughs> actually. And I was like, and I couldn't even come into consciousness and awareness enough to say, oh, sorry, I couldn't even do that. So she just instinctively put her hands over my heart and over my third eye and helped me get grounded. So that's the kind of experience that you can have. And again, I had another one of those experiences later on. So you have to be prepared for it and you have to be prepared for having um, a very, very different perspective. You're going to be seeing things in a way that you never have before. Uh, you're going to see things in ways that other people don't. So I find too, this isn't a guarantee, but when you're opening up your third eye and your crown chakra and you're really allowing divine information to come in, again, you might feel like you don't fit in with everybody. You might feel like now suddenly there's something weird going on. And some people do experience isolation. You know, it wouldn't be healthy for you to uh, stay in that isolation. You know, it wouldn't be healthy for you to stay in that isolation for too long. But if it's something that you need to kind of withdraw, you do whatever you need to. But definitely, um, I've heard it coming with headaches, you know, <laughs> some very, very physical symptoms, especially around the third eye. But you can open it gently and little by little through meditation. If you want to work with Archangel Metatron to help you with your third eye, that's very effective. And Metatron, if you ask him, he can dial it up or down. You know, if you're only willing to, let's, let's not have that big explosion where I'm jolting and falling off of a table, but let's just open it gently, little by little. He can help you with that. Archangel Dophiel is one of the archangels that can help you with the crown chakra and opening up to higher wisdom, seeing the, the great beauty of life and the great beauty of you in all of what you would call flaws, <laughs> flaws and all. Okay. And, and again, it's about bringing breath, color therapy. Okay. A lot of people will see the crown as either a lavender color or gold. I've heard gold as well. So, and then of course, indigo <laughs> for the third eye. So you could do some color therapy around that as well. But if you meditate, if you just want to do a chakra opening meditation, um, I like that you said the word effectively. Um, because that's such a human way to put it. How do I do it right? <laughs> How to make the most out of it? And true, you know, we as humans, we function in a certain way. And yes, uh, you know, if we don't do certain ways, it's not going to be effective. But um, if your intention is pure and you are meditating, you're doing, you know, your deep breathing, you can even call on these angels to help you, but you're really focusing your attention and intention on opening these things, making sure they're open to the right size. You don't want it too open and too you know, wobbly with no boundaries. You also don't want it tight and you know, not rotating or anything like that. But to a nice, you know, nice medium kind of place, as long as you're putting the effort into it, it'll happen. Now, what probably is going on here is a lot of times we have expectations about, okay, I opened my third eye. Why don't I, why don't I just sense everything now? Or okay, I opened my crown. Why isn't God talking to me? We have to manage our expectations about what the result of that <laughs> will be. You'll realize that as you go on with your life, little synchronicities will start happening for you or bits of wisdom just sort of pop up in front of you. That We, we don't want to search for evidence, but we will as humans, right? We just do. <laughs> but those are ways that you can tell that you do have your crown chakra open. And, um, you know, the crown chakra and your third eye open. You'll also find that... Um, in a way, I don't want to say that earth is like harder to deal with. <laughs> it's not that, but you'll find that you have a more peaceful approach to things. Um, that doesn't mean that you never get upset. It doesn't mean that you never set a boundary. So if anybody tries to make you feel guilty and say, oh, you, you're not advanced, you're not spiritual because you just got angry. That's a bunch of nonsense. And it's just really a ploy a lot of times to disarm someone or to win an argument or to seem like they're above other people. So don't worry about doing it so much like effectively rather than purely and with pure intention. If you come from that state, you'll open it just the way that you need to. <laughs> okay, so we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you so much love and take care.